If you managed to fall upon this video just by chance, don't forget to watch that video up there, which is the first video of this mini series, where we talk about how to capture body performance using the Rococo suit and uh, the face cap iOS application to capture facial expressions and how to import them into Cinema 4D and uh, start putting things in some sort of order. In this video, we are going to deal with applying that motion that now we refined and we have aligned with our audio onto an actual rig. Hmm, what can go wrong? This is the state of affairs uh, from the previous video. And we have our character, our character is uh, talking nicely, saying beautiful things. I hope the audio doesn't really interfere, but nonetheless, uh, it is what it is. And uh, what I'm going to do right now is go to my asset manager and type in here puppet. And I'm going to double click to bring this male puppet in here. And what I'm going to do is uh, try to transfer the motion from my performance capture on this puppet. Now, there are a couple of things we do need to do first. Now, this uh, particular male puppet has some very particular characteristics. And one is that it contains the character object and a rig and all sorts of other things. We do not need all that. We are going to just use the actual model and its uh, rig. So in case you didn't know, there is a workflow that was introduced a few years ago uh, that relate to the character definition and the character solver. And uh, this particular male puppet has both of these. And in order for us to drive the male puppet's uh, motion using our own rig, uh, what we need to do is uh, take our uh, Mixamo rig, the one we recorded using the Rococo suit, and um, add a definition on this. Uh, the system needs to see uh, what joints it's made of and uh, use the naming basically to define which joints are which in order to transfer the motion from these to the other ones over here. And you will see that the names are fairly similar. They contain words like hips, like left uh, up leg and hips and uh, left up leg and so forth. And uh, it's these names that define which joint is going to drive the other joint in the other chain. So in order to do this uh, and do it effectively, we need to make sure that the rig we have moving here, and let me just uh, turn this off temporarily so we don't have too much clutter in our viewport, has a T-pose. And because I don't want the sound to play when I'm uh, scrubbing through this, I'm going to turn off the sound uh, temporarily. So I can always uh, just uh, click on this tag, which is the motion system and go and open in timeline and it will just bring up our timeline over here now i can always uh, switch and uh, find using the a everything that's animated go to the sound selected and turn off the sound so now we won't have any sound playing excellent now let's go back to our motion system and in order to align those two poses let me just uh, go here to the left uh, remember we had that uh, T-pose in the beginning, and uh, this uh, puppet is in a T-pose. So I need to bring back that original T-pose, which I actually uh, chopped off using my Cut Connect, and uh, then removed. So I need to bring it back. How do I do that? Well, that's not very difficult. So there are two things you can do with each and every one of these clips. The default thing is to, and let me zoom in a bit, you can see if you zoom in enough, you get this uh, legend that tells you what the percentage of the speed of the clip is. And currently it's the normal speed, 100%. If I make this smaller, it becomes faster. So it's, uh, it takes 86% of the time to play it. Therefore, it's faster. And I can always extend it the other way and make it slower. Now, I don't want to make it uh, slower or faster. What I do want to do is extend it without changing the scale. And to do that, if you don't click on anything else and just drag this line, you can see it becomes slower or faster. It's not only this bar that controls the speed. But if you press Control or Command on the Mac and you start dragging, you can see now that we're just extending the input of our clip without changing the speed. And I'm going to drag this all the way to frame zero. 
because here we have the T pose. So if I do this, you should see, oh, it's not the T pose. So I was mistaken. We cut out the T pose from our performance. So let's go and find that uh, T pose and see exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to right click and cut the beginning. And now I'm going to use uh, the Not Cut Connect tool, select this clip, and using Control Command, I'm going to bring it back to where it was earlier. I can always move this around just to make sure that it's before it starts the performance. Again, I'm pressing Command or Control so I don't scale it. And I think uh, this is a good starting point, and maybe even a few frames earlier. There you go. Fantastic. Now I'm going to go and I want to find the uh, original beginning of this clip where we have our uh, T pose because that's uh, the most important thing to, to go and find our T pose. So I'm going to use my command or my control after I drag it this way. So command or control, I want to find the beginning. And again, command or control, I want to find the beginning of that clip. I think I can pull in the negatives. I can. And I'm pulling it until it doesn't go anymore because this is the first frame of the whole clip. And then again, command or control to make it smaller. I could have done this a bit easier, but you know me. I want to make your, your lives a bit harder. So now we have a T-pose, some random motion in the front. We don't care about that. And then we start our performance. But we don't care if there's no transition from this to this. So it doesn't really matter. As long as we have that at frame zero so that we can align the two rigs, the two uh, joint rigs over here. So with that said, let's go and do exactly that. The simplest way to do this is to go to your source clip, the one that comes from uh, Rokoko, and uh, right click, go to the rigging tags, and I want to create a character definition, reading the joints and all that. So create a character definition tag. With this tag selected, go to the open manager. And this should bring up this character definition manager. And all you have to do is extract skeleton. And this is going to go and read for each and every one of these predefined uh, joints. And these, this uh, hierarchy is predefined because uh, it's the most popular, especially with uh, Mixamo. And it's going to try and find, if you select this, for example, it says, go and find anything that has the name hips and add it over here. Go and find anything that has the word spine and go and add it here. So it populates each and every one of these. You can see we have a total of 53 joints. So we have uh, six in the torso, hierarchy, uh, left arm four, and so forth. And it finds them mostly by name. And you can do some include, exclude strings and, and all that nice stuff. And unless your hierarchy has been named with uh, totally irrelevant and ridiculous names, it should work for most of the properly made joint hierarchies. So now that we've created this, I can go and select the tag and let's name this Rococo. Having done that, we can uh, just uh, twirl this down and I can open this up, uh, this uh, complex hierarchy. And in theory, and let me make this all nice and visible, I can go to this tag over here, which is the character solver. And the character solver, what it does, it gets a source character, which would be our Rococo definition and applies the rotations to the target character, which in this case is uh, this rig over here. So I'm going to do that, and then we're going to solve some problems because it's not really going to work. So let me just close my timeline, and let's do that and, and see what happens. Make sure the solver is selected and drag this, the Rococo, into the source character. And now let's go and scrub ahead. And you can see that well, to a good degree, it's playing nicely, right? Uh, who would complain? But you can see that we're getting a discrepancy in certain areas. Look at my elbows there. They're tucked in too much and, and all that not so good looking stuff. Now, I could go and try to uh, fix things by offsetting rotations and all that, but I'm not going to do that right now because I have a better solution for this problem. This is a complex hierarchy that contains, amongst other things, a character object that has all sorts of uh, IK, FK stuff and all that. I do not need that. So always make sure you're at the T-pose. I'm going to go and delete this. 
Now, once I delete this, uh, you would assume that everything is going to work, but it doesn't because now the model itself uh, and the way this is put together is it has a single skin deformer and then all these uh, weight tags that are weighting each part of the object. But it was the character object that was defining these weights earlier. It's part of the way the whole system works. And now that I deleted that, the system, the, the skin deformer has lost uh, any a correlation between which parts of the model are going to be uh, skinned or deformed using this hierarchy. Because now you can see the hierarchy works fine. If I make this visible and make this guy invisible, you will see that uh, pretty much we're getting a very good translation from uh, my rig, uh, which is the white one. And uh, just for fun, I'm going to middle click to select all the children. And I'm going to go to basic and uh, give it a nice little uh, bright uh, green color here so we can distinguish it from the red and blue. And uh, you can see that if we go closer here, uh, we get a very good translation of the rotation. So we've managed to uh, solve one of the problems. But now we need to re-rig these objects over here to comply to, let me turn off what I don't need, to this joint rigs, positions, rotations, and so forth. Now, it may seem that you can just go here and say set line pose and all that. That's not really going to work. What we'll need to do, and in case you didn't know it, if you click once on a weight tag, it shows you the general properties and which are the joints that are uh, using these values to affect the model. If I double click on this, I get the paint tool so I can start painting. I'm not going to paint. But if I shift double click, it opens up the weight manager. And uh, this is exactly what I want to do now. So I'm going to dock my manager over here just to make things nice and tidy. And I'm going to deselect this. I don't need to select it. I'm going to select all the objects over here. I'm going to auto weight this using my weight manager. How do I do that? Well, you go to auto weight. And uh, with the default settings, you click Calculate. And what this will do is we'll go to each and every one of the objects. It will use um, one of uh, these algorithms to combine and find which joints should be the ones that are affecting it. Now, let me show you something here which uh, appears to be quite interesting. Let's assume I set this to uh, the lowest number, which is 1. If I go and click this button, Calculate again, it's going to do some sort of calculations. You're going to see some rough uh, subdivision of the weights. And if I now move this, you may see, and I like to use my grow shading and my screen space ambient occlusion to do this, uh, we may find some areas that have uh, certain minor little problems. Let me scroll around and see if uh, anything is going to um, become a bit more obvious. Um, I don't see anything. Um, in any case, uh, having a two or three of these will give you a, a bit of a smoother result. So you can always just go here, check the colors. Um, the transitions are a bit abrupt. Uh, number two, uh, two joints. Uh, and that means that more joints are going to have an influence in the same area. Uh, give or take a few more missing details. But overall, especially with the fingers and all that, there you go. So you can see we get these pointy things, maybe for do that or to do that there you go you will find that number that will work for most of your model now if particular parts of your model need to be treated differently you just select them and you go and select the appropriate algorithm i will not be going in the specifics of these algorithms uh, right now it's out of the scope of this tutorial but now we have everything nicely rigged so first of all i do not like uh, this uh, person's head. So let's go and find the head. And I just need to make it invisible. I don't mind uh, anything else. And his neck is going through his eyes. Now, that is hilarious, I have to admit. But uh, let's not torture this poor individual anymore. So remember what we did earlier? Um, we used this uh, constraint tag to control where the head is going to be. And I can always go here and uh, raise the head a bit further up and bring this a bit forwards. Good. Oh, I think it needs to come a bit more forwards. Again, you can make a hilarious looking um, androids this way. And uh, yeah, do androids dream of electric sheep? 
I was always wondering. There you go. So now we have a robot that is uh, moving our rig and everything seems to be okay. And now it's a matter of uh, applying materials and doing all sorts of other stuff to make this look uh, beautiful. So let me close the weight manager. We don't need it right now. So here's the question, and this is just a small tip for you to uh, move forward. What happens if I need to do some minor adjustments? So what if I want uh, the elbows to be a bit uh, more open or the fingers? Uh, you will see that we do get some overlaps uh, on the fingers at, at certain cases when the fingers are closed. And that's because of those differences in, in the two rigs where one of the two rigs uh, had the fingers straight, the other one had the fingers uh, a bit rolled. And uh, the way to fix this, or if you want to go and temporarily uh, change uh, some of the animation, um, you can do it many ways. But what I prefer to do, again, because I'm lazy, I can't deal with these things too much, that's why I teach and I don't uh, do projects, is uh, to go to your original hierarchy, find the joint you want to uh, fix, let's say. So I'm going to go and make sure that the elbows are a bit further out of his body. Now, how do we select this joint over here? So I don't need the joints that are driven. I need the joints which are the drivers. And uh, just get your move tool. And if you want to select the, the particular joint, you control double click. And it will show you any object underneath that double clicking. So if I go here and control double click, it gives me the torso model and this. So here I, I can always select it like this, but because I'm fancy, control double click will bring up this uh, or single click. It's a control single click. Well, control single click. There you go. You learn something every day and you can select this. Now, what can we do with this? Well, go to the coordinates and untwirl the freeze transformations. And you can see that in the freeze, everything is zero because we haven't frozen anything. The great thing is that by changing the freeze transformations, you retain the normal rotations and you just add some sort of offset over here. And you can either just uh, fine tune it so that uh, this arm is a bit uh, further out or the thumb is a bit uh, more open, or you can even animate these values uh, just to make uh, minor tweaks. So let's assume that I wanted uh, this person to elbow the person next to them at this frame. I would go and elbow someone or do something like that, uh, add my keyframe and then go back here and bring this back to zero and add the keyframe and then go back here and add another zero. And now we're going to see uh, the gentleman just do that. So you can do this, and this for me is the easiest way to go about doing uh, small corrections. Let me delete this and let me just zero this out. Uh, but there are many ways, there are different ways you can do this, but for now, just go to your source rig, find whatever joint you want, and just uh, go and play around with the, the frozen rotations, and that's the easiest way to do it. So here's my character, and uh, uh, it's all nicely animated. We are going to continue down this uh, thread uh, with uh, maybe some more performances and uh, some other tricks that will allow you to do uh, character animations extremely fast so that you can get your um, creative expression out there as fast as possible because it's all about creativity, something I have no idea about. Oh, and lastly, my previous video has gotten uh, only or under 800 views and it's been a few days. That's disgraceful. Just share the knowledge, subscribe, bells and all that kind of stuff. Come on, I need millions of views.